Hello, my name is Yael Saslov and I'm a Chinese medical practitioner and I would like to invite you today to join me on a journey. A journey that I've been going through for the past few years where I've been investigating. My clear passion is trying to combine theories and perspectives together. And what I've been trying to do for the past few years is understand the eight extra channels alongside with different aspects that have little to do apparently with Chinese medicine, which is osteopathy, physiotherapy, and different therapies that have to do with uh, structural bones and, and sinews. And what we'll be doing today is going to connect the Chong Mai the eight extra from the eight extra channels the diaphragm system and the digestive system and basically what i'll be trying to show you is con the connection between the perspectives the perspective of the pre-heaven of diagnosis on patterns that have to do with digestive system so let's begin what we'll be doing today is going to talk about first of all's digestion and perception I'll be trying to go, I'll go through the layers of the body, the physical form, and then the spiritual form from the pre-heaven to the post-heaven, from the physical to the emotional being, and try to show how, as they say, our issues are in your tissues and how we connect the different perspective of Chinese medicine with the physical form and with the emotional form. After that, we'll be discussing the diaphragms and the ancestral sinews and pillars. It's kind of like a... Um, a model from osteopathy and from the physical theories that have to do with unification, separation, with structure. Structure and how our um, perception and perspectives are embedded in our structure. And last but not least, we'll be discussing the Chong Mai, which is what we're here for. And we're going to talk about the five different trajectories of the Chong and the relationship with the different diaphragms and the relationship with the digestive system. It's going to be fun. So let's begin. This is a picture of my daughter's eye. This is um, the way we perceive the world, the clear and innocent way we see the world. And the way we see the world is the way we digest it, the way what we take in and what we see from the outside and how we digest it in our system and how we make it part of ourselves. And what we'll be doing now is I'm going to be discussing the movement of the layers. We're going to go through the different layers of the tissues from talk about pre-heaven, talk about post-heaven and how the physical and emotional being of ourselves is embedded in our tissues and in ourselves. Let's begin. So basically when I talk about digestion and perception, I'm, I like, I always like the analogy of the earth, okay? The different layers of the earth, the different layers of the body, when we discuss how the, the movement or the, how the earth touches the air and how it perceives and receives things from the air and the world outside and how slowly it goes within our layers of the earth and within our layers of the tissues and how we take the world from the inside, how the different layers are perceived and how they interact with each other and what comes from the outside and the inside and how they connect in the earth. And the same goes with the body, how the things that we receive from the outside, whether it is food or drink, or it is emotional um, beings around us and how we perceive it and how we digest it. We'll talk about primary channels, which is the 12 channels that we know. And we'll talk about the extraordinary channels, which is the channels that are go underneath the, the earth. If I talk about the primary channels, which are the channels that are going the, the more external layers of the earth, the extraordinary are what goes underneath. It's the water that is beneath the surface and how it all works in with the digestive system and how the digestive system basically is part of all these layers and different um, parts of the layers have different ways of them um, to perceive, to digest, and how we basically take the world from the outside, from the way level, through the chi level and into the yuan and the other way around, how we come from the yuan level, how it is perceived through the chi and how it goes out through the way. So these are the layers of the earth and these are the layers of the body. What we do is that we have, first of all, we have the external layer, which is our skin, which is our, the, the part of our body that is connected or is in touch with the world outside. 
This is the world where chi is involved, how we move and how we expand and how we perceive things, how we move within the, the, the connection with the outside world. And that is the way level. The way level is the way where we are, is our defense system or our way we receive the world from the outside or how we uh, show the inside out. And that's the epidermis, that's our skin. That is basically the place where we have the most contact with the outside world, how we take the oxygen or the liquids from the air and how we take out what we need to take out and how we perceive physical and emotional is through our skin and how we inhale it in our body and exhale it outside. And then we have the fascia. Fascia is a really cool um, tissue, which is uh, is quite the hit nowadays, basically because it was not discussed 200 years ago and it's only been discussed the past decade or two. And the fascia is everywhere in our body. It's a connective tissue, but there is what's called the superficial fascia, which is underneath the epidermis. And that is kind of like a um, a scuba diving suit, no, so like a, a diving suit, which is all through covering the whole body. And that is the connection, the layer that goes be under the skin and before we go into the internal organs and issues inside. And the fascia has is still part of the way in the chi levels. And it is a fascinating fabric of tissue where it has the, um, our, um, our blood system and our venous and system goes there, liquid systems, the system that has to do with nervous system. I mean, all the connective systems go through the fascia and allow um, connection and allow discussion and allow communication in our body. And the third one is fat. We have a few layers of fat. It's kind of like an Oreo cookie where we have fascia fat, fascia fabric, but there is a fat system that goes over our um, basic under the, uh, the superficial fascia. And that fat basically allows things to be absorbed. It, it, it allows things to be held in our tissues if it needs to be hormones, if it needs to be liquids. And it is an absorption and a holding system, which can be a good thing that we need to cover and, and help things, um, hold things for a time of need. Or it can be something that we use for a disadvantage, which is going to be an excess of holding in. And all that relates to the digestive system, and we'll see it coming in soon. The next layer is the internal layer. So we have the epidermis fascia and fat, which I relatively like to see as the external layer because it has the most connection with the outside world. The fascia system in the, the superficial la fascia has the most nerval nerve systems uh, and receptors in our body. And it basically receives strength, uh, things from the outside and interrelates to what's going on inside. So the fat is something to protect us. But then we go into the internal issues, our deeper layers of the earth, and that is where the blood moves. The blood moves everywhere, but here's where the blood is really the, the center system of it, and where things, where we want things to move and we want things to connect. And the blood is basically another type of fascia, another type of, um, connective tissue, but in liquid form in order for it to go into all the systems of the body and to connect and, and communicate all systems of the body. And memory sits in the blood system and our nutrition sits in our blood system. So basically everything we digest, whether it's from the outside world or whether it is from the inside, it is goes through the blood and connects to the whole body. And that is the yin level, which is basically the center between the out and the in, between the pre and the post, and we'll see that soon coming in. And that is where the muscles come in. Muscles need a lot of blood, they need a lot of, um, the earth system needs to hold us together and to relate to the movement. And the muscles have a straight relationship with the digestive system because that is basically, it's the, the spleen and the stomach build the muscles and hold us together. And we have the ligaments, which are a little bit more uh, livery and gallbladder related, but they are basically the strength and they hold us together and they make sure that we have a structure and balance. 
and then we have the organs, which we're going to discuss in depth pretty soon. But the organs are basically part of the internal system. They're part of the layers, and they are the ones that create. They're the ones that digest in the essence. But if you see all the layers up to now have a certain amount of digestive system relationship to it, we'll talk about that soon. And the third level and the deepest, which is what we're going to be discussing mostly today, is our constitution. That's our DNA, or that is our um, pre-heaven energy, the Yuan level where the Jing realm is. And that is basically what we bring in from the world. We relate it into our body and we allow it to sit and sh basically it's a movement from the pre-heaven to the post-heaven and the Jing and the Yuan level are the compound of pre-heaven. This is where things are stored. This is our attic. Well, basically our basement where we hold things in and we hold them basically in our bone and our marrow. Everything is everywhere in our body. We're in constant movement, but these certain layers kind of allow us to understand how things relate and how they relate to the digestive system. And I'll go into it very slightly right now.